So in the previous video, we discussed intermolecular forces, and you might have noticed that I did not include hydrogen bonding in that discussion. And that's really because it, it's kind of an extra special intermolecular force that deserves a little bit more time spent on it. And this really does fall under a dipole-dipole interaction, but it's much stronger. than your average one. And this occurs with the following elements, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, when they have a hydrogen directly bound to either of these elements. Now, I mentioned fluorine not because it's like, wow, that's a really important one. There really is only one option for fluorine. It's hydrogen fluoride because fluoride only makes one bond to something else. And if we put a hydrogen directly on it, we're kind of done. And so when you think of hydrogen bonding, it's included, but uh, it's not that interesting because there's just few compound one compound that does it. So really we're going to talk about nitrogen and oxygen here. And the oxygen has a stronger hydrogen bond than the nitrogen does because it's more electronegative. So let's just look at how these actually work. And I'm going to select ethanol to start with. Now we have the requisite things for hydrogen bonding to take place. We have an oxygen and there is a hydrogen directly bound to it. And there's lone pairs available. So these lone pairs are the hydrogen bond accepting sites. So this is where the hydrogen will interact with. And this part right here is the donor. So let's draw that out again, maybe over here where it's not as crowded. So if we have another ethanol molecule or something else, um, there's a bunch of things that can hydrogen bond. We can get a little bond kind of forming right between this hydrogen and that oxygen. And I'm just, I'm trying to draw a dotted line here without confusing too much for the lone pairs, but you get the idea. Here's the hydrogen bond interaction. This ethanol is donating a hydrogen bond to this oxygen. There's a partial negative charge here, there's a partial positive charge there. That's not the only thing that could interact with these. In fact, if we also included something like ethanol, which is an aldehyde that does not have hydrogen bonding. You might say, oh, there's a hydrogen right there. That hydrogen is not attached to the oxygen. It's attached to a carbon and that carbon, is, there's a oxygen on that. That doesn't allow for hydrogen bonding. This is still just dipole. But what we could do is interact with a hydrogen bond donor. So we can have this interaction right here with this hydrogen and that oxygen, even though this is only capable of accepting a hydrogen bond and not giving one. So this interaction can be quite good, not quite as good as something that can hydrogen bond back to it. Let's look at another um, species that we can do hydrogen bonding with and that's acetic acid. And we'll see kind of an interesting effect with this. So I'm going to draw two acetic acid molecules here. And we can have a hydrogen bond 
kind of right here, and we can have another one right here. And we can form what's called a dimer. That's two molecules that kind of associate with each other. And because there's two hydrogen bonds, this, this can be fairly strong. And you'll notice this, especially when you're in the gas phase, because if you measure the pressure of a bottle of acetic acid, it's actually lower than you expect just because these two molecules tend to associate with each other and that lowers the pressure because there's less things bouncing around freely. So that's just a little side note from that hydrogen bonding can do. Um, now let's look at nitrogen as well, just so that we have talked about that. So here's very similar to our ethanol. We have ethyl amine or, you know, there's ethan, ethan amine is, is another way to call it. And it can hydrogen bond. So we can get some interactions between this hydrogen and that nitrogen. And you'll notice that we can donate one hydrogen bond because there's only one lone pair here. Uh, but like I said, the hydrogen bond from nitrogens is weaker than from oxygen. And we can see this from comparing their boiling points between ethanol and um, ethylamine. And they're very similar in molecular weight. And so really the only difference that we're talking about here is from the hydrogen bond. And the boiling point for ethylamine is 17 degrees C. So if you're in a normal laboratory, this is going to be boiling at, at that temperature. But for ethanol, it's 78 degrees C. And so it's quite a bit stronger to have the oxygen derived hydrogen bond than the nitrogen one. Although mo both are very important, especially when we talk about protein and DNA, um, then you really see hydrogen bonding being very, very important. But it's also important in terms of looking at solubilities and how things are going to inter molecules are going to interact with each other. So with that, um, thank you for joining and we'll see you in the next video.